Despite many attacks on Westerners, as well as Tokugawa Yoshinobu's refusal for French intervention, the Western powers have decided to stay out of this conflict. And as such, the Imperial Army is now closing in on Edo. In early April, most of the Imperial Army entered into the borders of Edo without conflict, barring the battle involving Kondo Osami. Now they did this by sending agents ahead of the army into the province of Mino, Nagoya, and Hida. In each province's case, these agents with their semi-regular men would try and mix in with the populace, and would promise them that as the new government took over, that their tax dues would be cut in half. Now, this understandably made anyone that came in contact with these agents happy with their presence, and slowly this message was spread. Naturally, the Imperial Army wasn't harassed as it moved. After all, they represented lower taxes. Those that were pro-shogunate weren't inactive themselves, though. Ever since early spring, several former Tokugawa retainers under the Shinsengumi vice commander Hijikata Toshizo and Otori Kaisuke poured out of Edo. Their mission was Utsunomiya, which was a castle town on the road towards Nikko and Aizu. The daimyo of this town, Toto Taratomo, wasn't there. His predecessor, Tarayuki, was, and he wasn't allied with the former shogun, but was with the Imperials. Taratomo was being detained by Satsuma Chosu men. See, he had been charged by Tokugawa Yoshinobu to travel and deliver a letter to the emperor, both apologizing and submitting to his will. The contents of this letter most likely would have led to an end to the conflict, as well as the shogun, well, he would have been submitting. Neither Satsuma nor Chosu wanted this to end. They were gaining a lot of power from having this continue. By May 8th, Hijikata had taken both Shimotsuma and Shimodate. It was an easy grab as their daimyo had already fled. However, it wasn't really worth taking as there was, well, it was small, and it didn't have much money or supplies. Around the same time as this was happening, a riot in Itsunomiya was taking place. During the 10th, Otori Kaisuke would have his men attack a 700-man imperial-held castle. The castle would fall the same day, and Toto Tadayuki would escape to Tatebayashi. Otori, commanding the main army, then entered inside the castle. He then gave orders to his men to hand out rice from the castle storeroom to the town's people who had been rioting. The goal then was to strengthen their position there, which they did. Otori's men then joined with Hijikata's force, as well as Nagakura Shinpachi's Seiheitai unit, and went north towards Mibu. Their plan was simple, take the castle and then hide there and wait for the enemy. What they hadn't counted on was troops from Satsuma reaching the castle first. The Satsuma men were shocked to see their enemy and quickly withdrew behind the castle's walls to mount a defense. Wow. The shogunate-aligned men then set to work on setting the castle town on fire, but they were out of luck as it started to pour rain down upon them. They would, after that, make a desperate attempt at attacking the castle head-on, but after taking 60 casualties, they backed off and withdrew towards Utsunomiya again. On May 14th, the Imperial Army, consisting of Satsuma and Ogaki men, came from the south and launched a counterattack and was able to retake the Utsunomiya castle. This forced Otori's forces to retreat on the road towards Aizu. Now while all this was happening, if we take a step back, the emperor and his court were passing articles, firmly moving Japan closer to a democracy. On April 6th, the emperor read out loud these five articles. Number one, all steps to be signed by public debates by establishing a large assembly. Two, officials and commoners to participate actively in the government. Three, it is essential that officials and soldiers together and down to the people fulfill their wishes and obtain their full blossoming. Four, the bad traditional customs will be abolished and universal principles to be taken up. Five, the imperial work to be greatly advanced by calling upon the knowledge of the world. 
Now, while these principles were being put in place, Yoshinobu's friends and Princess Kazu, widow of the late shogun Imochi, were asking the court to have mercy on the Tokugawa clan. Katsukaishu, commissioner for the shogunate and negotiator, had also made contact with Saigo Takamori, begging for Ito not to be put under siege. The two would eventually agree on the conditions for Yoshinobu to yield to the imperial government. Tokugawa Yoshinobu was to confine himself within his home province of Mido. All weapons and ships were to be confiscated by the government. If he was to do this, only those that resisted would be attacked. Now, after this agreement, the Shogunal Palace was opened up and the Imperial Army moved in and occupied it without fighting. On the 27th of April, Yoshinobu went into exile within Mido, and Yasato from the Teyasu family was nominated to succeed the senior branch of the Tokugawa. The shogunate, at this time, was truly over. Go ahead and click that video right there if you want to know more about Japanese firelocks back in the era of the samurai. Don't forget to slash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.